Hassan will be doing the honors at today's coffee and code session, and he will be presenting how to build a GitHub action together. Thank you, Hassan, for joining us. If you have any questions for Hassan today, you can unmute yourselves at any point during the talk and ask them directly. And feel free to continue the discussion after the session on the Coffee and Code Slack channel. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to you, Hassan. Yeah. The stage is yours. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Hassan Farouri. I am a bioinformatician at Clinical Genomics uh, in Side Life Lab, Stockholm. And um, um, I'm by no means expert in creating GitHub actions. I, I will use this opportunity also to probably exchange ideas with you guys and uh, show what I uh, show by just a simple example of uh, creating a GitHub action that can do a um, uh, job or something on, on the pull request. And um, uh, I will be, uh, I have a short presentation prepared. Let me see if I can handle it. Uh, Zoom first. Um, I will start my presentation. Uh, here. First, uh, yeah, I will start with a short presentation on uh, on uh, uh, building Git GitHub action and with an example, basically, and uh, to show uh, um, what are my point of views are and what uh, I'm planning to do today. The uh, the thing I'm going to do is that to make a lazy code reviewer's life a bit easier. This came to me a while back when I started uh, a pull request that I had like 60 something files touched in the pull request. I wanted to warn myself, don't uh, create that many pull requests, but I wanted that to happen and via yeah, GitHub action. Um, so just a quick review of what uh, a GitHub action is. It's uh, there are a series of automated tasks that happen within a software development lifecycle. This is the exact code from documentation. And um, it's an event-driven um, uh, system that uh, these events will trigger workflows and uh, these workflows contain jobs and the, these jobs could uh, contain steps. And uh, all these are happening within a runner, which is essentially a virtual environment that's uh, boot up during the... Uh, um, when the event is uh, triggered. Uh, from documentation, you could, one could find such a structure for GitHub Actions uh, and using them. Um, they have like a name field, they have like, a, um, I think I will, uh, yeah, sorry, I had the background noise. Uh, so they, uh, they, have, uh, they have a structure on the, uh, as you see on, on the left side, you have a name, you have um, when um, this event is happening and then the job, um, uh, section we have there, and this job could have uh, steps, and these steps could run on a certain um, uh, runner on GitHub. And these steps could use various actions that are available, or they could just uh, run a simple command. And when looking at the schematics of it, one could see how it looks like. We have, a, again, we have an event, we have a job, and these job could have like multiple steps. Of course, one could have like multiple jobs and uh, multiple event types that could trigger. And um, it's a fairly straightforward, that's how to use GitHub Actions. Um, so for today's uh, Coffee and Code, uh, I will take the following assumptions that you have, you are familiar with GitHub Action workflow, you have run a, um, a GitHub Action or two, and you are familiar with using the, the workflow that someone else built. You are familiar with Docker, or even better, you have watched Pontus's Coffee and Code uh, about containers. And you have a strong dislike towards pull requests with too many file change. This was the, my motivation why I wanted to present this GitHub um, action uh, coffee and code. I, I made a pull request with 65 uh, files changed. I wanted a warning there. And uh, not mainly for myself, but for future codes that I'm going to review probably. Um, so uh, the example is that I, I, I would like to build the GitHub action that checks the pull request and warns the user or the author if more than X files are touched in that pull request. So what I need for this purpose, I would need a repository. I call it lazy reviewer. This will be name of the action. I will need a Docker container definition for it, which is a Docker file. Um, I will need an action metadata. Uh, it could be named action YAML or YML. Action code itself, which, will, which it will be an entry point for the container. This uh, is named entry point.sh, a readme file, 
the documentation, how to use this action. And finally, an understanding of available environment variables uh, for this uh, purpose. Eventually, I will lose the I will use the event payload that uh, GitHub provides. So let's dive into it. First, uh, for the Docker file, uh, before I explain it, there are multiple uh, action types one could use. There are JavaScript and composite ones, and there are available documentation if you're curious about that. But to, for this one, I will probably just use uh, uh, a bare minimum Docker file. As you can see, it is, um, it is using Ubuntu latest. I will be installing uh, JQ in it, and I will be using my action code and uh, define it as an entry point. And, uh, um, and the action metadata contains essentially what the, the information about uh, the GitHub action itself. They are, if you if you want the bare minimum action file, action met metadata contains three required fields, a name, a description, and uh, a run section. And optional um, inputs would be something such as inputs, outputs, and author. An example of such uh, metadata could look like this. There's a name for it. There's a description for it. There's author for it and inputs, for example, for this purpose, I want to, I want to only allow three um, files change per pull request. And, um, and then this is not required to set, but because there's default value to it, one could set this value to require two. In that case, the, the person who is using this GitHub action should specify this parameter in their action file. I will come back to these values a bit later. And then this is gonna run on Docker. My image file is Docker file, and the uh, max, uh, maximum number of uh, files per PR is, will be provided as an input to my entry point.sh, if you remember from uh, this um, action code. And action code itself is also fairly simple. So uh, for the, uh, this is uh, used for the Docker actions. For JavaScript actions, as I mentioned, uh, there are other types. It's, for example, index.js. Uh, we should make sure that this uh, entry point is ex executable. And this is how an uh, example of an action file could look like. What I would like to do is to get the number of the changes, changed files in the PR somehow, and then just use a simple bash um, um, check to see if the number of changed is greater than the first argument I provided in the my action file. And then just complain, print something, and then exit with exit code one. Um, why this is number one here is the same order that we have uh, that we have set in the uh, in the arguments in the uh, in our uh, action YAML file. So the first item will be the item one from our entry point, the second one will be second and so forth. Um, so before we go to the terminal and I show um, I like a live demo with the, the coding part of it and how to create it and uh, show also live, um, the environment variables are um, available in every step. I will shortly go through it. Um, and remember, if you remember from the events, these events have, um, um, we have access to these events through a payload uh, that is, is uh, JSON. And all, these, all this payload is uh, stored in every step of uh, workflow in the environment variable in the GitHub action as GitHub event path. And uh, um, yeah, I, I didn't read the documentation for it first, so it took me like a two, three hours to make one. But yeah, remember the sixth hour of debugging could save you five minutes. But to, to save you the headache, I will quickly show uh, just um, uh, the, uh, the environment variables that are available. Do you see my uh, browser now? I think uh, this, yes. yeah, okay. So these are the environment variables that are available for every step of the GitHub action that uh, that uh, we're going to create. Um, I, for those who are interested in to this, I, I would uh, recommend to go through these and find out uh, if these are interesting for you. And um, for example, the, the very the important ones are, for example, GitHub workflow name, is the uh, GitHub Actions is always set through is for the running ones, for example, GitHub repository, it will be name set to whatever repository that uh, uh, current repository is named. And uh, GitHub event path is essentially a JSON file that is complete, uh, uh, shows um, the, it's the complete payload that we could use to extract information about the current event. And uh, 
Um, um, there are lots of interesting stuff as well. For example, GraphQL API. I'm, um, I haven't used this, but uh, I saw a recent discussion in the code Slack in, in the code channel on Slack that people were discussing about GitHub GraphQL URL. So this could be also be interesting. And uh, lots of other information that one could use to access and um, utilize during the uh, creating and uh, uh, action code part of the GitHub action. Um, I think uh, with that, I will, uh, um, I will, uh, I forgot one more slide. So uh, the, uh, I'm going to use the following uh, items. So uh, I'm going to create a pull request that's a pull request action that only functions on a, uh, that only triggers on, on pull requests. It will count the number of files changed. It will ignore draft pull requests. It will provide an option for the user to change the number of the files to be allowed for the pull request. And then to do so, I will use JQ to process, to, um, to parse and extract information from payload JSON. And I will use uh, GitHub CLI to update pull request. Probably I will try to comment and then label it. Um, label the pull request as, uh, for example, as a tag or is it like bugged or failed or something. And also uh, leave a comment under under the pull request. Um, so I will let, I will go to terminal. I will show you. Um, let's see uh, if I can stop share and share my desktop again, so uh, I can show uh, my terminal. Uh, do you see my? Yes. Yeah, perfect. Um, so uh, before we go, I would like to show how uh, how a payload uh, looks like. Um, a payload file looks uh, some oh, apologies. The payload file looks something like this. It has information about the uh, about, for example, the over pull request. It has information about uh, who's assigned to it, what um, uh, the, the for example automation merge status, and the repository information, which uh, label it is. This is uh, um, these these information are all available. The items I'm interested in too is uh, files changed. It's, this is a long one. So what I will do is that I will show you um, um, pull requests uh, that uh, changed files. Um, let's see, changed files. Mm. Okay. Uh, change files. Uh, Well, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, ah, well, when things happen, everything happens wrong. Pull request. Oh, re requests. <laughs> um, add payload. JQ. Yeah. So, uh, for example, I want I would like to extract this value from the. Um, um, number of chain of files in my pull request. I, this, I created this uh, payload in dummy file. So for example, in this dummy, I have seven pull requests changed. I could extract the title of my pull request, for example, um, from this payload. For example, it's uh, just a feed PR test. And overall, all the information that we could access in a, in a payload could be done in the action part of the code. Uh, what I have done is that I also have created a Docker file um, with, um, with my, um, with the requirement for uh, JQ, all dependencies I would like to have. JQ was a bit tricky to install. So as you can see in my Docker file for this action, I, from the uh, GitHub CLI, I had to add these following lines and install curl and GPG and whatnot. And the, the action file that I've created is a bit uh, more advanced. So what I have here is that um, I have created, um, to be able to comment under the pull request, I've created an ac access token. Um, as I mentioned, I've also created the, um, I have created also a, a, a variable to for the maximum number of the files allowed, and also also a variable to also ignore pull request. I'm going to pass all these three variables to my um, to my um, entry point uh, action code to be able to process it. To be able to do that, I would I'm going to create. A, uh, um, let's see. I will, I'm going to create. A, um, um, create a, a, create a repository. 
I'm going to name it lazy reviewer and uh, um, lazy reviewer. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to add the following Docker file, the action, uh, that YAML and entry point to my uh, to my code. So I'm going to uh, cp Docker file uh, action and uh, my entry point to, and my readme maybe my readme is empty. Um, a moment, I want to make sure that everything is fine. Yeah, cp Docker file to lazy re lazy reviewer. Um, I'm going to copy my read meter. I'm going to copy my action to lazy reviewer. And I'm going to copy my entry point to lazy reviewer. This should be all I need. Yeah, this is all I need for this one. So I will go to lazy reviewer. What I will do here is that I will uh, get add all the files that I have created to this uh, new Docker uh, into this new action repository. I will add a comment to it, commit to it at initial commit. So just uh, this one. The important thing is that now that we have created all these, we need to create a tag for our um, uh, for our uh, GitHub action as we are going to specify in the action file. If you remember from creating an GitHub action, um, 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 the GitHub action structure looks like this. For example, it's gonna happen on some sort of event and it's gonna do uh, a certain job and uh, various steps. And to be able to do that, I would like to specify which tag from my repository to use. To be, to be able to do that, I will create a tag for this. I will create, um, um, I will call this version one. And let's see what, I, what files I have. Okay, git push. Follow tags. Well, but now uh, in my repository, I have um, I have created the lazy reviewer. Hopefully, if everything goes fine, um, I would. Um, this is my GitHub action with the. Docker file actually yeah, I'm on my entry point. What it's going to do is that in the, again, back to it, it's, uh, it's going to check the number of files and then complain. I have created one tag for it. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a branch and I'm going to use this uh, GitHub action on a pull request. To do that first, I will create a, um, uh, I will create a branch. I will call it uh, test uh, version one. And uh, here I will, touch uh, uh, more files that it's allowed. I will touch five files. I will add all these files. Uh, well, I will commit them, new five files. And, um, and uh, I need to also create a, a GitHub workflows directory. And I will, uh, I will move the, I will, uh, I will use the GitHub action that I've, which, uh, I, I just showed um, uh, to, uh, path that I would like this GitHub action to function. All the GitHub actions that you would like to use uh, should be residing in this path on GitHub. So uh, let's have a look how it looks like. I'd like to, for this to happen on pull request. Um, I'd like this to, um, I'm gonna remove ignore draft. I'm gonna remove this, remove this. I'm gonna use version one, as we discussed. I'm gonna use, bare minimum of GitHub actions I would like to have. I will create this and I commit that GitHub workflows lazy as well. Git commit dash m um, workflow and git push. All right. Now back to the uh, back to the repository. I will create pull request from this one. Um, PR body, and uh, let's see what will uh, happen with this pull request. It will uh, complain. GitHub action should trigger um, now, and uh, with uh, we will now we will review what will uh, 
if it successfully can use the GitHub action that we have created. Uh, while this is running, I will uh, quickly go back and review what, uh, what happened here. Uh, so what we did is that we created a, a GitHub action that used uh, the same, well, this is the same repository. This, this could be another repository. It's, uh, we are using version one and um, uh, I haven't provided any of the op other options either. So what will happen in the GitHub actions? We'll try to install all the um, JQ and the uh, GitHub CLI here for me. This usually takes a, takes a bit of a short while. And then, um, right. Uh, these are, uh, this is the whole um, um, Docker thing that will uh, have, that will run on every, every Docker based actions. As you can see, there are like multiple environment variables, the one that I showed or uh, passed to this uh, step. What I forgot here is that I forgot to make my entry point uh, executable. So I need to go to terminal and then change it back. So what I need to go is that I need to go to the master again. I need to ch mode plus x my entry, entry one, git commit uh, executable, executable entry point. Um, and then I need to create a new tag as well. It push all the tags. Now I've created a new tag with a properly executable entry point. I change back to the uh, my um, my branch, and I update my GitHub workflow to use version two here. It's a new tag that we have created. And git add GitHub workflow. Uh, git commit use version two, git push. Now, hopefully, this will complain that uh, I have too many I have too many files changed. The allowed value is three. And uh, it is possible to use probably persistent data between actions as well. Um, maybe you should have uh, set that one up. Um, while this is building, I'd like to also uh, mention that um, to be able to use these, there is no need to one to use uh, entry points uh, SH. One could use uh, uh, for example, go a GitHub API to access and access all this data of the payload, and um, um, or JavaScript or uh, all those uh, tools out there. Um, there's uh, there usually I find this GitHub uh, Google GitHub Actions uh, organization and all their actions that they have created a very good source to get inspired by finding in new cool ones or just to create a new one. Uh, yeah, here's how our GitHub action complained. Uh, we have six files changed and uh, a maximum number of allowed files three. Now, I would like to also add a feature to, um, uh, to leave a comment under the, um, under, the, uh, under the PR for the user to uh, warn them that, uh, that this, uh, sorry, to warn them that uh, they have uh, too many files changed. But first, I'm going to increase the number of the um, number of the uh, uh, files uh, required. Let's see. So I had, uh, um, as you know, we can use the uh, I think max max files per PR. I'm setting it to ten. Make it add. Um, this git commit increase uh, number of files allowed. While that's building, another PR is going to hopefully pass. Um, I will quickly show how, what uh, extra we can do to, to for example, um, uh, to uh, uh, to for example leave comment under the PR. I will check out my master and I will start altering the uh, 
and entry point ch5. Um, I will I will just copy paste from my from my previous efforts. Uh, what I would like to do is to use um, um, to use uh, GitHub CLI to leave a comment. But to do that, I need to uh, extract the GitHub uh, um, my Git repository URL and add it as a remote to my um, GitHub uh, Actions entry point. So GitHub Action inside when it's running inside the Docker, it will be aware of the repository it's going to leave the, leave the comment on. And I'm going to extract the pull request number from the same event path that I have. And um, if you are familiar with GitHub Actions, you could also extract information from each step. Um, those can be set uh, as such at the raw output. Um, I will ignore this part. I would like to also ignore if, uh, if uh, this PR is a draft to do nothing, don't complain on the number of files. And uh, when all is set, I would like to uh, authenticate using GitHub CLI, uh, using the repository's GitHub token, and then leave a comment under the PR. Um, all the other steps are exactly the same. Um, so going back there, uh, and I will remind you why these options are set. For GitHub access token, this is what we need to be able to send the data to uh, to, uh, um, to our entry point uh, to be able to comment. Uh, this is the same, hasn't changed. And I, there, is, there was a field to ignore draft. And I, all these three other items are also passed as um, argument. We have maximum number of files changed, it's default three. Now we will have access token and we will have ignore draft. Um, so I will add all these files and then create a new tag. Uh, git add entry point, git commit, uh, um, update with the GH functionality. And then we uh, git push. I forgot to create a tag, uh, git tag. I will create tag number three. And then git push. Yes. Right, now we'll, we go back to our uh, um, branch and I will, we will use version three. Let's go back to the PR, see what happened in the PR. Again, failed. Let's see what uh, what's going on with this. Uh... Ah, I have a typo there. Max file per PR. Um, I need to set it to uh, have a correct name there. But I will set it correctly now in the using version three, and I will also add functionality for the uh, leaving comments. Um, let's go back there. Max files. I will leave it at three because we would like to. We would like to see it, and we will have uh, uh, we will have uh, um, we will have uh, what was that? Let's see. Okay, action. We will have access token and ignore draft. Access token says set says uh, mm. I was just making sure I have secrets set in my uh, secrets uh, actions. Things are called GitHub token. And ignore draft set to false. This should be good enough. Yeah, um, just we have to make sure you have GitHub tokens uh, properly set. I think by default, you don't need to set it. Uh, but um, I had my own. Um, um, token for my uh, user. Now I will add this new action. 
and git uh, commit use version version three and git push. Make sure I did it right. This is still version two. Let's see. Now this should be. This should be running. Uh, starting soon. Um, yeah, so far, uh, I think this, this is going to be the last, uh, I, prob probably a couple of minutes over time, it's supposed to be half an hour. Um, but what we, what, we, what we did here is that we created a, uh, we created a Docker file, we created a action metadata and an entry point just that, that uh, handles, uh, understands it, can read the payload, extract information, and uh, do some judgment based on this information. And um, for our uh, uh, for our testing, we create a branch. In that branch, we use the uh, the action that we have created with the proper tags we have set, with the parameters that we have set, and uh, yeah. And then um, we have that done. Yeah, there it is. So our GitHub action. Uh, probably I will open this in new tab. First complaint, and then left a comment underneath the action, and the comment is as such. And uh, of course, we can in increase the number of the. Uh, we can affect us how this behavior can be done. Probably through some persistent data, one could also remove these. And um, um, yeah, I hope this uh, this was a this was a short and. Uh, uh, precise introduction or like uh, exchange of information, if you call it, to how to create a basic GitHub action, uh, do some do something with the data that we have, and then finally uh, take an action. Um, it um, GitHub CLI is quite powerful. You can even uh, add uh, use utilize these labels uh, when the GitHub uh, when the pull request fails or does something to tag the um, pull request for you or uh, probably also remove the previous comment from the same user again and uh, do stuff. Um, I guess I will uh, probably, uh, let me check if I have gone through all my slides. Yes. And uh, um, I would like to hear from you if you have any question or uh, how you think about it. And uh, um, was this uh, um, hopefully uh, something that's, uh, um, useful stuff for some of us or some of you. Thank you. Thanks, Hassan. Um, you you can all unmute uh, you can unmute yourselves and continue the discussion if you'd like if you have any questions for Hassan. I can also stop recording if you feel safer that way. I'm gonna stop recording.